Hey friends, I hope this finds you well in this third week of Eastertide. I'm so glad you joined me for this midweek BLT. I think one of the silver linings of sheltering in place, at least for me, has been that I've had a chance to work through that pile of books that sits year round on my bedside table. And one of the books I've really come to enjoy is by Mark Oakley. It's called My Sour Sweet Days. Mark is a priest in the Church of England and a great writer. And the book is a reflection on a collection of poems by George Herbert, that great 17th century priest and poet. I first discovered Herbert in college when I sang Ray Fawn Williams' Mystical Songs, which is a great setting of some of Herbert's poems, and I fell in love. In fact, one of the great joys of the past year for me was leading with parishioner Brad Whitehurst, a retreat at St. James on the spiritual power of Herbert's poems. I want to share one of them with you today called Easter Wings, fitting in this Easter season. It was first printed in 1633 in Herbert's book, The Temple. And when it was printed, it was printed on its side so that the reader would have to turn the book to actually read the words. But when you first open the page, you would see it shaped like this, like wings. But when you turn it and actually read the poem, it's shaped like this, with the lines of the stanzas contracting and getting tight and then expanding back out again. It's really a brilliant reflection by Herbert on something I think that's deeply true about both God and us. But first, let me read the poem. Lord, who createst man in wealth and store, though foolishly he lost the same, decaying more and more till he became most poor, with thee, O oh, let me rise as larks harmoniously and sing this day thy victories. Then shall the fall further the flight in me. My tender age in sorrow did begin, and still with sickness and shame thou didst so punish sin that I became most thin. With thee let me combine and feel thy victory. For if I imp my wing on thine, Affliction shall advance the flight in me. As I said, the shape of those sandals contracting in and then expanding back out again, I think says something really important about both us and God. First us. Notice how the beginning of both of those stanzas talk about sin and the effects of sin. I think one of the things that's true is that sin is a turning in on ourselves, a closing off of love of God and love of neighbor in favor of love of self. It closes us in on ourselves and cuts us off from the source of life and of joy. It closes us in just like those stanzas. But then in both stanzas, God steps in. God gets involved God intervenes with love and forgiveness, and we rise with Christ, and our possibilities and our hope expands. Herbert is painting in words something that's very true about our own experience of sin and guilt and our own experience of love and forgiveness. But that same shape of closing in and expanding, I think, speaks of God, too, you see, the truth at the heart of the Christian faith is that the creator of all things, the eternal and everlasting God, chooses for love's sake to limit himself, to enter into our humanity, to be confined to one body in Jesus at one time and in one place. He starts his life bound in swaddling clothes and ends his life nailed to the hardwood of the cross and then is laid in a cramped tomb. But Easter proclaims the truth that those bindings, that limitation can never limit God. God doesn't stay there. God's power and God's love are uncontainable. Christ came to share our life, to suffer even alongside us so that we would rise with him. And I love that second to last line in the poem, for if I imp my wing on thine, 
It's a funny word, that imp, not one uh, we use very often. It's a term that comes actually from falconry. And the idea is that feathers are grafted onto a bird's wing so that it can fly again. The truth of Easter is that we are imped. We are grafted into Christ's resurrection, Christ, the first fruit of those who have died. Because he has been raised, we too shall be. His resurrection sets us free, sets us free from sin and guilt, from shame and fear, from death itself. And it promises us forgiveness, freedom, joy, and everlasting life. And it reminds us of both the promise of the prophet Malachi, that the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and the prophet Isaiah, that those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength and mount up as with wings as eagles. It's the promise of Easter that we follow where Christ leads the way. So I want to leave us this week with a collect for Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Wishing you every joy and peace in this Easter tide.